So we've got this ongoing trial about Fonnie Willis being uh, potentially disqualified from this case involving President Trump and in 15 Georgia. other defendants in Georgia. Uh, that, again, will go into tomorrow. Uh, we've also got the reply from uh, Jack Smith's office on the immunity issue at the U.S. Supreme Court and a stay there. I kind of, before we get to just listing a bunch of cases, I, kinda, I think we start with the first one that's on TV right now, Fonnie Willis. Okay. And I think the best way for our audience to kind of take this down is what's best case for President Trump, worst case for President Trump, and kind of a, a ha- is there a middle ground like where you didn't get all you wanted, but it's, yeah. it's a quasi win? Well, here's what the, the, the and if Don, President Trump has joined in this motion, the motion that was made in this case by Mike Roman, one of the defendants, is both a motion to disqualify Fonnie Willis and Mr. Wade. And then Andy will get into that actually means the disqualification of the of the entire office and a motion to dismiss. So they have made a motion to dismiss with their uh, request for the prosecutor be taken off the case. That's correct. This is a motion to that has two prongs to it that has been made by Roman and signed on to by President Trump. And that is to disqualify the district attorney's office in Fulton County, Fonnie office. Willis and all her assistants out of it. And a motion to dismiss the indictment in the case. And Judge McAfee has got to decide both of those issues. He can decide, for instance, to disqualify the district attorney's office in Fulton County, which is Fawny Willis and all her assistants, in which case a new prosecutor from Georgia would be appointed with the complete power to make a decision as to what's going to happen in the case. He could pursue or she could pursue the case criminally. He or she could dismiss the case, move to what we call in Georgia null pros the case, which is a fancy Latin term that means to dismiss the case uh, or pursue some defendants, dismiss other defendants, allow pleas that have been tendered to be withdrawn with their consent. In other words, wouldn't oppose that if the judge decided to do that. Judge McAfee would also have the right under Georgia law pursuant to a case that was decided in 1916 to dismiss the indictment in the case. There is authority that he could dismiss the indictment as well. So that would be the best case scenario. The second thing that can happen is he disqualifies the office. The governor then appoints another district attorney. That district attorney evaluates the case and then will make a decision whether to proceed or not. I would, my indication inclination would be not because this Rico and Andy shaking his head, the Rico thing is so untested. And the third thing is, and this would be the worst case scenario for the defendants is he says they haven't made a sufficient case to show that the case is tainted. And he st- and she allows Bonnie Willis to stay on the case. I I kind of think that's hard press. You want to play that bite? This kind of sets it up. Let's go ahead and listen. Without going into all the, the painstaking details, there is no doubt in your mind that from 2019 until 2022, um, Miss Willis and Mr. Wade were in a romantic relationship. What's the question? Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. Okay, so that, let me tell you what that does. It, that's not a crime, okay? Consenting adults not a crime. It's the crime issue here or the impropriety issue is the money utilization. The money that was given to this law firm of Wade's was then used to take Fawny on these trips and, and pay for expenses and whatnot. And that's what's going on in court literally as we speak right now. And that puts this whole issue of when you're looking at the pursuit of justice in a criminal justice system, you want, don't even want the taint of uh, any kind of either bad faith or a taint of, of irresponsible judgment or impunity. I mean, you just want to stay away from that. And that's the problem. That has now overtaken this case. I think McAfee, the judge, is doing a good job of controlling it. But it certainly takes away from it. Very impressed with Judge McAfee's judicial temperament. I must say, I think he's doing a very good job of uh, handling the witnesses and the objections that are being made and keeping the thing on track. But as Jay said, the important thing here is, and Professor Dershowitz also mentioned this, is the appearance of impropriety. It's not a some things may not be criminal, but the office of the district attorney is there to do justice, right. not to get a guilty verdict, but to do the right thing. And if there is an appearance of impropriety, and it seems like the evidence is adding up to that, it's up to Judge McAfee to decide there's no jury in this hearing. It's just the judge alone making the decision. So a- Ashley Merchant, who's the attorney for um, uh, Mike Roman, 
has subpoenaed both Willis and Wade. And then my friend, uh, and Andy's as well, uh, Steve Sadow, made a, a, a series of uh, objections and clarified. And I will tell you, Steve is a very good lawyer, and he did an excellent job. Uh, some of these lawyers need to be a little bit more organized in their presentation. Steve was not one of them. He was he did a great, really great job, first class. So, I mean, let's go to D's call from California line, too, because I want to answer people's questions. Yeah. Like we said, the worst case scenario, best case scenario. Uh, D, welcome to Seculo. You're on the air. Yes. Uh, my question is, I understand that uh, the situation in Georgia with Fannie Willis and Wade, Nathan Wade, yep. that they could be dismissed from the case. However, how, could they possibly both be disbarred? I mean, participate in something that they know this is wrong? Yeah, I mean, there is, I think, th is the State Bar open an investigation? Yeah, I know there's been complaints. No, followed. but there could be a State Bar investigation open as to whether the prosecutor engaged in conduct that made the office uh, uh, subject to a public ridicule, ridicule or embarrassment. Yeah. And they could say face disciplinary sanctions, whether it goes to as far as being disbarred. I don't know. That would be up ultimately to the Georgia Supreme Court, in fact, because anything that the State Bar of Georgia does in terms of discipline is appealable to the Supreme Court of Georgia. If she's kicked off the case, that doesn't mean she's disbarred. She actually keeps her position she's, as Oh, she still be the Fulton County DA. Yeah. She just will not be the DA on this case. In this case. And, and, then and her it. office is disqualified as well. It's not just her. It's her entire office right. is disqualified. And the new DA gets appointed by? Governor Kemp and would be able to evaluate the case from the beginning, which I think they would. And I think in a matter of months, I think the case would be dismissed. They could actually dismiss the entire case. I, I believe case. that's what the outcome so, I mean, would be. You see, don't know, but I, I think that's what it would be. Jack Smith has filed his immunity reply to SCOTUS. So, um... We yep. know that we are looking potentially at the end of this t tomorrow, uh, a decision maybe on the 14th Amendment uh, case. Yep. That looks pretty good for President Trump. We've talked through that extensively. But we may also uh, get some more decisions on the stay. the stay and the financial penalty slash receiver. So let's talk about what could happen Friday. So Friday could be a really is going to be a big day. I mean, number one, we know that the at least the plan is that in the civil fraud case, the amount of judgment is coming, uh, and that will be how much the Donald Trump's damages are. And they're talking numbers in excess of $350 million. There's also the possibility that he could be barred from uh, engaging in the real estate business in New York and the possibility of the appointment of a receiver to run the business. And, Andy, you have been, and we said this earlier in the broadcast, you have been a receiver. That would be a very significant move Um and would affect the operations of the Trump organization. Well, yes, indeed. I've been a receiver in many cases. A receiver, first of all, is an officer of the court. The receiver is appointed by the judge, and the receiver's job is to take over and run and operate the businesses as he sees fit. Let me ask you this, Andy. Though. Yeah. If, if he could pay the fine, if the three hundred fifty, if the three hundred fifty million dollars, and the president can pay it. Does that alleviate the receiver? Might. Might very well. The judge would say, what's the purpose of a receiver in that Unless case? Unless they're barred from doing business in New York. Uh, if they're barred from doing business in New York, then somebody has to run the operation, Until right? right? Until it's, uh, something is decided, that yeah. would be a receiver. You know, and, and of course, President Trump owns more than one building in New York. Could, we talked about this earlier. I'm sure people would want to know, too. For $350 million, instead of him just writing a check out of a bank account, could he, if he ha did have a receiver... He could still go through a process, say, hey, I've got this building. I'll, I'm willing to sell off a third of it, you know, for $350 yep. million. It's a tower in New York. It's worth yep. probably billions. So I'll, I'll sell off a third of it. And that'll take care of the court fee. And even if he had a receiver, he could handle that debt potentially that way. Right, Andy? But you have to – there's a process you have pro to go yeah, through. You can't yeah, what would happen? Well, I think the, it's important for our audience to understand. Yeah. I think you have to understand if the, the receiver may take a business decision, whatever that may be, it might be objected to by Trump, okay, or by the state. In that case, the receiver always seeks direction from the court who appointed him. It's called a petition for direction. The receiver would go to the court and say, this is what I recommend being done. This is what one side wants. This is what the other side wants. Judge, direct me as to what I am to do. Right. So, I mean, it's, there, there we kind of go there. So there's, again, different ways. They don't have to let him do it. But no. but certainly that would be the a very large financial you know, penalty, obviously. But it could be a, that would be a could, huge one. That's appealable. Is the receivership appealable? Not well. It stays in place while it's appealed. Right. The receivership. Uh, it could would, be appealed, but it would not be. 
it would not be dissipated while because they're controlling they worry about the control of assets. There that be, will depend, Jordan, on whether the judge in that case decides that he can no longer do business in New York. Yeah. That would be a big step. I'm not sure where they can quite go there, but we'll see. Yeah.